This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. And welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Jessica Luther from Alpena County Library. Hi, Jessica. Good. Hello, Nancy. How are you? Good. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. And I know we missed taping last month, but I'm sure that hasn't stopped all the wonderful activities <laughs> that always go on at the library. Of course not. There's been quite a flurry of activity. <laughs> and our favorite time of year, tax season. Oh, yes. Everyone's favorite. Um, we've gotten our tax booklets in. We have the federal booklets. Unfortunately, we have not received any forms. Okay. However, the reference desk is happy to print those out for patrons as they come in. Uh, it does cost about 20 cents a page. Okay. Uh, patrons are welcome to also contact the IRS directly and request forms. However, for Michigan, we have all of the forms, all wow. of the booklets, and we have the home heating credits. So those are there while the supplies last, of course. And in addition, um, the AARP Foundation is there at the library mm -hmm. three days a week, and they're providing tax prep services free of charge uh, for our low-income residents as well as our senior citizen residents. Um, they're there, let me think, they are there Mondays and Wednesdays and Saturdays. And then Mondays and Saturdays, they're there from 10 until 4. Okay. And then on, or I'm sorry, excuse me, 10 until noon. Okay. And Wednesdays from 4 to 6. And you don't really need an appointment or anything. But it is first come, first serve. It is. And we had our first day, and it was a lineup down the stairs. So we definitely know that there's a need for that. So when you get there, um, you know, you might have to take a seat. You might have to wait. We just want you to know that don't. If the chances are of you walking right in are pretty slim, so you need to get there, sign up, and mm -hmm. wait your turn. And it seemed to move pretty fast. I was quite impressed, and that's such a wonderful service because I it feel is. like as the years go by, it gets harder and harder to do your taxes, and especially with the push for everyone to do them online. Yes. And if you're not familiar with using any of the software programs, it's so helpful to have someone to help you. Yes, and, and remember once again, these are all volunteers, so mm -hmm. make sure you treat them with respect and thank them. And don't be bringing in big old boxes <laughs> for big long returns. That's not what this was designed exactly, for at all. Exactly, yes. Okay, what else is happening? Well, I'm sure everyone knows we had our Twitter contest yes. a few weeks ago, and that was such a smashing success. We received over 99,000 tweets in our support. Unbelievable. And it just, the outpouring of support for the library, it was truly, truly humbling for all of us. Um, so because we won that, we got $2,500 towards digitizing the Alpena News and the Michigan Labor Journal. And these are issues from the late 19th century and the early 20th century. Wow. And you know, some people might wonder why why bother? Why is this important? But I, one of the main things at the Alpena County Library is providing access to our historical yes. records and preserving these records of what life was like, what people were like is truly, truly important. And then having the access, that's one of our main miss missions there, is having access to, for anyone to walk in off the street and be able to look up things if they're a researcher, an amateur genealogist, whatever their interest might be. And you make it really, really easy. You have people there who can help you access things if you don't know how. Um, it's just really user friendly. The library mm -hmm. is handicap accessible. There's no reason why you're not getting there and getting the information you need, particularly in the Alpena history area. Exactly. And I, our special collections staff is just they're unparalleled yes. in customer service and knowledge and just their willingness to just sit there and work with you and talk you through things and the knowledge that they just have at the top of their head is just astounding. I just, I go in with questions every once in a while and they know exactly what I'm talking for, about, exactly what I'm looking for and it's fantastic. Well, thank you and thank you. Alpena area for making this yes, a possibility. It's going to be wonderful for us today and future generations. Yes, Next. most certainly, yes. So another exciting thing we have coming, and this is a first for the area, we have the TEDx Alpena Public Library Live. And what that is, it's an independently organized event, and it's a live broadcast of the official 2016 TED conference, which Ooh. is based in Vancouver, Canada this year. Um, so we are going to be streaming it at the library, which will allow the Alpena community access to something that they would have to travel thousands and thousands wow. of miles for and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to just attend. 
And with this, it's Tuesday, February 16th. Okay. And it is, um, it's an all day thing. It starts, registration starts at 1130 and it goes until 1045 in the evening wow. if you choose to stay for the entire thing. There are four sessions and these four sessions consist of radical repattering, repatterning, imagination, invention, and ingenuity, okay. life hacks, and deep memory. Wow. So this, the structure of these will feature the, your regular TED 18-minute talks, but it'll also have music, comedy, technology de demonstrations, uh, short, shorter talks in the 18 minutes. And the conference speakers, they range anywhere from entrepreneurs to authors and astrophysicists and wow. astronauts. It's just fantastic. And some of the better known people are the founder of Airbnb, Adam Savage, who people know from Mythbusters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Norman Lear, who's an amazingly famous television yes. producer and activist. And we'll also be featuring a few local presenters. Uh, we have uh, Jerry Dennis, the author of The Living Great Lakes, okay. which presents a scientific history of the Great Lakes. Um, and also with that, it's it's an important thing to bring the community. The ideas worth sharing philosophy is a global movement. And we at the library are very excited because the Alpena Area Chamber of Commerce is partnering with us to help bring this to the area. And you better call, better get your reservations yes. because yes. it will fill up fast. It will fill up very fast. Okay, so next we have about two more minutes left. Okay, so we have some music performances coming up. We have a one-man band on February 21st, Okay, Peter Madcat Ruth. And that is at 2 p.m. and it's all ages, so we encourage you to come. And then the following week on the 28th, we have the Moxie Strings, which are a progressive electric cello and violin duo with a percussionist. And they travel all over to schools and libraries. And that, that performance is made possible by the Michigan Humanities Council and the Michigan Council for Arts and Culture Relations. Okay, and if someone goes onto your website, they can find out all this information, yes. and that address is? It's alpinalibrary.org. Okay. Everything is listed on there. It's also listed on our Facebook page. We've been updating that constantly. Okay. So any questions, and just call the library, and someone at Circulation will be happy to help. And that number is 989-356-6188. Very good. Thank you so much Thank for you, being here, Nancy. Jessica. Please stay tuned. I'll be right back with Richard George and Michelle Smith, and we're going to talk about Finding Hope Northeast Michigan 2016. Hi, I'm back with my last two guests, Richard George and Michelle Smith. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. Glad yes. to have you here. And um, Richard, Finding Hope Northeast Michigan 2016, mm -hmm. when I look at the flyer and read through all this stuff, wow. What a great event. How did this come to be? Well, um, it, it um, is kind of a fruit of the Alpena Area Ministerial Association. And we got together and we're thinking, you know, there's so many people that we know that, that uh, just are living without hope. And we truly believe that Jesus Christ can, get, can bring hope to anybody's life. So we thought, well, let's, let, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Um, this particular series of meetings, we did, the, we did it last year as mm -hmm. well. Um, but this particular series of meetings we have set up um, with some very special uh, uh, testimonies, some, some folks just sharing their story of how uh, you know, life was you know, a certain way and, and, and just despair and troubles. But Jesus Christ came into their lives and in relationship with him, um, it, life is different. They have found hope and, and their lives are, are better. I may have just completely bypassed your question. <laughs> no, I think you did very well. And Michelle, what is your involvement in um, Finding Hope? Well, I've been involved in um, both years of planning, and I'm the secretary treasurer and on the planning committee. And so I've been actively involved, and it's just been a real joy to see how lives have been impacted. Last year we had such a positive response from people that were there, uh, just letting us know that they appreciated that opportunity to receive encouragement and to um, have that time to just kind of dial down because you know life gets really busy Nancy yes. doesn't I mean yes. people just kind of can get on a treadmill sometimes and mm -hmm. you don't realize that your life is so busy you don't really make time for the spiritual aspect of things or make time for God and so last year uh, people just found that this series of meetings really gave them that opportunity to, to kind of do a spiritual inventory and to take a look at life and say where am I headed and where do I really want to be going and so it's it's a great opportunity to do that inventory okay and Richard how many churches are involved locally 
Um, well, it's a function of the ministerial association, okay. but how many churches do we have? Uh, we have actually 13 supporting thir yeah, churches. 13 wow. churches that are supporting this particular event, and, and I think that's great. So we'll have uh, people from, from all of those churches doing some upfront things, and really it's uh, you know, just an effort of a lot of people to come, make it come together. You know, that's wonderful when you see collaboration, oh, you know, yeah. in the business world and the social world and every world and especially mm -hmm. the spiritual mm -hmm. world because, you know, we're all out there for the same purpose, have the same goals and hopes and mm -hmm. dreams and plans yes. and prayers being answered and so it's really great to see this collaboration. Okay, so it's a free event, first of all, we want Absolutely. to let people know that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be held at AHS Auditorium. It starts Friday, February 19th. And at 6.30 p.m., finding hope in our struggles. So mm -hmm, start mm -hmm. me out with that night. Okay. Well, on that night, um, yeah, our, our focus is uh, that, that we all have struggles. We all have those things that we go through, some of them very deep and dark. And, and um, what we're saying is that Jesus Christ can, uh, can give us hope in those times of struggles. And um, so on that evening, okay. um, on that evening, we'll have uh, uh, some music. And um, we'll, we'll also have uh, each of the evenings um, a special uh, kind of a children's thing. You know, one, a couple of the evenings it'll be um, you know, with, uh, with puppets, which, you know, that's always great. Yes. Um, the other evening um, uh, will be uh, kind of a, an illusionist kind of a thing, but with a, with, a, with a message. For me, one of the highlights of each of the evenings are the, the testimonies, the stories that um, just you know, different people from the community will have. Um, you know, my life was like this, but 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 Jesus has given me hope. That's a very powerful thing. And then each of the evenings, um, we'll also have a, a message from the from the Bible by uh, one of the local pastors in town. I um, I get to do the first evening, and, okay. uh, and so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, and the first night it's um, someone talking about her struggle with alcohol, prescription, yeah. drug addiction, and thoughts of suicide. Wow, mm -hmm. if that isn't headline news everywhere exactly. you look these days, you know, yeah. how, yes. how poignant that you're, you know, starting out with that. Yes. Yes. And then to hear a personal story, mm -hmm. you know, kind of makes it fit home, plus someone else sitting in the audience can say, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. that was me or that mm -hmm. is me, yeah. you know, yes. and she made it through, here's what I can do to help me yes. get through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and um, you know, we're, we're kind of anticipating there will be people just like that going through the same things. And, you know, just uh, this week, we're having a conversation with those folks that are sharing their stories. I thought it was great because their concern was, too, they wanted to be able to talk with some of the folks afterwards and, mm -hmm. and, and help them. Uh, okay. yeah. So not only do they, not only are they, they're telling their story, which is really huge. You know, when you think about it to stand in front of that many oh, yeah. people and, and to do that. Um, but their their goal is they want to help others, and I think that's a great thing. For by the grace of God, go oh, I. Absolutely. Okay, then Saturday, February twentieth, six thirty p.m. again, back at the AHS Auditorium, mm -hmm. finding mm -hmm. hope in our fears. Do you want to mm -hmm. tell me about that sure. one, Michelle? I sure do. You know, in this day and age, Nancy, there's so many things happening on a national scale, worldwide mm -hmm. scale, and even a local scale that a lot of people are struggling with fears and, and all different kinds of difficulties. And Cliff Prince is going to be sharing, he's a sergeant who was deployed to both Afghanistan and Iraq, and he's going to be sharing about how in the face of danger and at a time of great loneliness and stress, he found hope with God's strength to face those things. And it, I actually happened to have heard his story before and I can tell you it's very gripping, very inspiring, mm -hmm. and very heart strengthening. Um, so that's what's going to be happening on that night. Okay, now we've only got a couple of minutes left so we got to get to Sunday. So mm -hmm. Sunday, February 21st at 4 p.m. Finding Hope in Our Pain. Tell me about that session. Oh yeah, actually you, you're more familiar okay, with tell this, me about with that that speaker if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, Charmaine Kramer is going to be sharing how she was able to come out of the shame and the fear and the pain of actually having exper experienced sexual abuse as a young girl. Uh, which was overshadowing every part of her life. Sure. And she found hope through the Lord, God Almighty, to face that and to start a journey of healing and restoration and how her life is really now anchored in hope. Wonderful. Okay, once again, refreshments will be served. There's going to be a shuttle service to and from the parking lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you pull into the high school, it's all icy and yucky. Don't worry Absolutely. about that. There'll be a mm -hmm. shuttle that's going to come right by, pick you up, take you right to the door. Mm -hmm, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if someone has any questions or would like to join or, or mm -hmm. have anything, what's the best way to reach someone? Mm. 
I think um, there's a couple things that they could okay. do. We have a Facebook page, Finding Hope Northeastern Mi North okay. East Michigan, that they can look on. There'll be a lot of information okay. on that. And then I, I would say, um, good question, right, Rich? <laughs> Call New Life Christian Fellowship okay. at 354-0095. Okay. And we'll be glad to furnish that information. All right, thank you. And please extend our thanks to your committee for bringing this wonderful event. And I know it's gonna be great and um, a wonderful spiritual event for our community. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You bet. <laughs> Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning, Karina Cole, a top-notch basketball player for the Lady Lumberjacks. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Karina, you're doing a phenomenal job. You're an Elkona grad averaging 24 points a game for the uh, ACC team. Describe how the year is going and, and uh, how it's going for you. Well, it's going really well. Um, we enjoy coming in every morning at 6 o'clock to practice. Um, I like to see the teammates every day. We all have smiles on our faces even though we're super tired. <laughs> um, coach Bobby is a blast to be around. I love having him as a coach. Um, I wouldn't change it for anything. Really. Outstanding. Well, that's that's great to hear. You can get up at 6 a.m. and play basketball. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it would happen at first, but you kind of get used to it after sure. a while. And you're playing with your sister? Yep. That is definitely an experience. A uh, positive one, of course. Sure. Just like high school. So. Yeah. Well, at, at uh, Elkona, both of you ladies are legends and in a positive way, and uh, we're very glad to have you at, at ACC. What are you studying? I'm studying the medical assistant program as a two-year degree, so I figured it would be a good thing to go into. I've always wanted to go into medicine, so I uh, thought it'd be a good start anyways. Good deal. And you're finding uh, it challenging and rewarding in the classroom at ACC? For sure. I especially like we have a clinical portion where we have to go out actually and hands-on in the workplace, so that is quite interesting compared to just sitting in a classroom Good. All the time. And you like that? Yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Good. Where are some places you've gone? Um, well, this semester we had to work at a clinic near our town that we grew up in. So I'm in the Lincoln Health Center working 12 hours a week with the nurses and the doctors who raised me throughout yes. the years. So that's pretty cool. Just a stone's throw from uh, Elkona High. Yep. Yeah, good stuff. Well, uh, um, you know, as a fan of uh, basketball, I've in, uh, very much enjoyed watching you play the last couple years. And um, um, your uh, skills are, are very sharp, and uh, particularly your shooting ability. Now tell me how you perfected that. I would have to say that was many hours of practice. Yeah, since I was probably three or four, I've loved basketball more than like anything else, pretty much. So I used to play all the time. Uh, my dad was my coach all growing up, so that helped. Um, he coached uh, boys when I was in high school, so I'd go to his practice and then my practice and practice with the boys. So I was getting like four hours a day, so that helped a lot. Yes, your dad loves basketball, I can tell, and yeah. is very knowledgeable about it, and attends many of your games. Yep, him and my mom both, and then my grandpa comes too. Um, I love having the support of them yelling at me in the stands. <laughs> yes. Well, I love that too. I mean, uh, from my perspective, having local folks on the team, especially if they're really good, but even if they're not, um, draws local folks who want to watch them play. And it's a good thing for the college, and it's a good thing for the community. So I do see your mom and dad and your grandfather there quite a bit. They don't do much yelling. But, yeah. they, but they're, uh, they're watching you and your sister very intently. It's, it's neat. Yeah, so uh, you have uh, Macomb tonight? Yep. And they're a tough team? They are very good, yes. But I think if we stick to it, we can have a better chance than last time. Very good. Your, uh, uh, overall, the season has uh, gone, gone uh, well in your estimation? Yes, especially compared to last year. I mean, we aren't winning quite as many games as we want to, but we're contending a lot better. and we're not giving up, which is huge in my eyes. So. Yes, yes, very very much so. And uh, Coach Allen, you enjoy. I, it seems like uh, you two have a, have a good relationship, coach-player. Coach 
Yeah, it is. It's been really fun <laughs> hanging out with him and um, learning from him. Yes. Well, you probably know that Coach Allen was a phenomenal player himself back in the day and uh, has been around ACC hoop for a long time, both men and women, and has seen many players come and go. And uh, sees, I think, you as one of the very top players that have ever gone through there. So that's um, pretty neat. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, pretty neat. So um, what are your plans both in terms of, uh, what are your plans in terms of uh, next year and where you might want to play ball? Um, I haven't decided for sure. He's um, actually in charge of that and he wants me to focus on the rest of the season. So I'm just playing basketball and waiting until I hear what he has for my offers. He's trying to get me the best deal financially and for uh, school as well. So. Is proximity to uh, Northeast Michigan a factor for you in this next step in your uh, life? Um, it really was at first. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to come here. But I'm trying to get over the need to be at home state that I've been in forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to be open to it, but I don't know how long that will last. Sure. Well, eventually, you know, we all have to leave home to, to a yeah. degree. And then... Uh, and then sometimes if we're fortunate, we can come back. Yeah. And uh, that's a very sweet thing when that can happen. Um, so you, you're uh, looking for another school to play ball. I wouldn't imagine there, I would imagine many schools would like you to have uh, them, have you play ball for them. And, uh, and then long term, your career goals are what? Uh, I want to be a doctor, but I don't know how long I want to last in school. So. I'm shooting for a PA for now, physician's assistant, and see how that goes. Very good. Would, uh, would your interest be to come back in Northeast Michigan to, to be a, a, a health care provider? Uh, possibly, yeah. I love this area. I love this small town, and I know so many people. It's kind of a comfort zone, too, though, so I'm not sure if it's just that, but I like being with my family. And Very good. Very good. Now, I had uh, heard that you, that you folks have a gym in Lincoln. Is that true? Yes. We, my dad um, um, works on the board at our church, and he was, him and some others got together and decided to build a gym for us kids growing up in the church. That was when I was about seven or eight, maybe. So, yeah, we've been working out in there for a long time. Wow, what a beautiful thing. That is... Uh, for people who love basketball, that's a sign of love right there, yeah. getting the gym built. Well, uh, thank you, Karina, and good luck tonight. Good luck for the rest of the season, and we certainly enjoyed watching you play the last year and a half, and uh, it's been a pleasure. So thank you, and uh, thank you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town Furniture and Set Design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.